to get the conversation offline, we want to just kind of bring similar minded people in, in one space, in a safe space, and just discuss some really real and important issues that are going on, I suppose. I guess like GCSE sociology probably uh, is what kind of sparked uh, any relationship that I had with feminism. Mm -hmm. And back then we weren't really taught it in depth, but it yeah. was more so, I guess um, from a 15 year old inner city London boy's understanding, it was essentially women who want to dominate men. Uh -huh. That's what I understood it to be at the time. Um, All women or? But just, just, just that really, yeah. essentially, it's women, women versus men trying to, um, I, I guess, uh, recalibrate the, the differences, but not necessarily, um, but on, on every aspect, so even like physical, you yeah. know, so it was, it, I didn't really understand it in depth, but I guess um, the older I got and the more I started to ask questions and read diverse literature about feminism, like it just expanded to it from where my understanding is now is obviously more so of a um, kind of re removing of, of, of oppression, intersectionality and so on, which is which are words that weren't really used when I first used I remember was on the one show. Um, they were talking about uh, the head wrap that Muslim women wear and um, I remember this exchange we never got out of my head. Basically in the studio, which is why white woman was telling the Muslim woman that, you know, it's unfair that you don't, you know, get to feel the wind. She said, it's unfair that you don't get to feel the wind in your hair when you have to feel the wind in your hair. And the Muslim woman says, well, you know, we have a woman only who choose to have their spaces where they do that. And this is why women just like, oh, no, that's just not right. And it was just that failure to understand that someone else can live differently from you. Mm -hmm. And I remember having this conversation with, with someone who saw that they or they identified themselves as the feminists back in the world, and I was like, you know, what I really don't get is, to me it seemed like one group of women telling other women how to live and how to be free and that made no sense to me because at the same time I felt that these women were tackling what I saw as issues that affect all women. If I'm honest, like up until about uh, two years ago I always thought feminism was like women just kind of being like, no, we're like the best and I was like, oh, I assumed I was like, no, it's not for me. I didn't really like sign up to it. But recently I consider myself more of an equalist and I've understood a lot more that it's not about like women prevailing or anything like that. It's more about like equal treatment. It's about, yeah, women, you know, men and women being brought up and taught the same value. I've always been like a quiet sort of person and a lot of my experience of feminism have come from just the people in my life just seeing it all work. So in my first year at university, I went to the Feminist Society meetings with a couple of my friends and it was interesting seeing like how everything is different and how women and men are targeted. I remember um, they had an example of how you advertise food and you had like a broken app that was tied with men and it was just bought beef, bread, beef. <laughs> like big food, here you go man, do your thing, masculine yeah. meat. And then when it came to advertising women, it was kind of like this very slender woman barely in a like magnet and it's kind of like, sexy, I'm not really going to eat, it's going to make me fat. And I never really thought about all this, but once you can't see, it starts to show me that how my experience was different to my female counterpart. Movement or just mm. as a thing, shall we say? Uh, yeah, like feminism in the media, and one of her big projects was before she did video games with Lego. And it was like, so the Lego, it was Lego got a different thing. Basically the whole point was when Lego was created, this initial marketing campaign was, it had a, a little girl. It was very gendered. Yeah, well, no, it was not gendered at all. Oh. It was a little girl holding the Lego and it was just like uh, building together. That's what it was about. It was like, these are blocks built with it. And what has become from the 90s um, to basically now is um, there's basically boys Lego mm -hmm. and girls Lego. And they showed how the two are advertised and boys Lego is like, Battleship, <laughs> violence, build this shit. It's a bit watch Cartoon Network, right? Yeah. If you've got it, go and just watch Cartoon Network and you see this, like, and you see this with all, basically, toys target at boys are like, shoot this, bomb this, <laughs> violence, yeah, 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 man. Mm -hmm. And things targeted at girls are, is this pretty house that's already been built? Are you <laughs> <laughs> and fake stuff. And, you know what I mean? It's so pink. 
that's all and stuff like that. And she got one episode that I think Wasteland of Girls Lego and stuff like that. And what that really struck me because I, I I watched a lot of Carl as a kid, right? And obviously it, it didn't struck me. I didn't realise how you're primed from really I mean like from like, you know what I mean? Yeah, from birth you're primed to be um yeah, you're, you're, you're primed to fit these strong gender roles, and I can see how that gets imparted into you in life. A lot of what's happening in the mainstream media about feminism, there's, there's also there's a, almost an attack on it at the moment. So this kind of workshop is to kind of break down any misconceptions, any misconceptions, anything, all, all stigma attached to being a feminist and kind of claiming to um, break down any kind of masculinity um, or patriarchy. So we want to take it offline, have a, have a conversation, have a dialogue, engage with people that may not fully understand what it is.